Mob Rule won today. Bring in the clown, a trapeze artist, and fire someone out of a cannon. Because our politicians and the Speaker, Sir Lindsay Hoyle, have turned Britain into an absolute circus. It's a disgrace. The government has boycotted voting on the Gaza ceasefire debate. The SNP staged a mass walkout with the Conservatives in tow. And Labour Speaker Lindsay Hoyle has been forced into a grovelling apology after accusations that he'd pandered to the Labour Party and Sue Gray's wishes to save Keir Starmer. Can I just put that correct? I've never met with Sue Gray today. I didn't bump into her today. I'm offended by that comment. I think you'd like to withdraw it. And I apologise for... <laughs> for a decision that didn't end up in the place that I wished for. Well, you're probably wondering how we all got here. Well, MPs were going to spend all day pointlessly arguing about a variation of the same thing, a ceasefire, before conducting a series of pointless votes that will have no impact on either Israel or Hamas. But it was the Speaker of the House of Commons, Sir Lindsay Hoyle, who stole the show. Mr Hoyle, who reminded everybody that he is very much a Labour MP, stands accused of colluding with his parliamentary party to help Sir Keir Starmer defuse a backbench and quite possibly shadow frontbench rebellion. He stepped in and saved his mate. So, here's how it all breaks down. It was the SNP who tabled the debate on a ceasefire in Gaza. Convention in the House of Commons dictates that MPs vote on the SNP's motion and then the government's amendment to it. That meant Keir Starmer was bang in trouble. Total turmoil. Rebellions, resignations from the shadow front bench, Labour MPs continuing to be hounded in the street. Mr Hoyle, though, had other ideas. I think it's important on this occasion that the House is able to consider the widest possible range of options. I have therefore decided to select the amendments both in the name of the Prime Minister and in the name of the Leader of the Opposition. So in an unprecedented intervention from the Labour Speaker, he added a vote on the Labour amendment and as a result, Starmer was spared from a potential rebellion en masse. But it gets worse. Moments later, BBC reporter Nicholas Watts said... The message from senior Labour sources was you will need our votes to be re-elected as Speaker after the election. Labour has since denied this, but the clerk of the House of Commons, Tom Goldsmith, actually wrote a letter to Lindsay Hoyle, warning that he was breaking with convention. And just hours ago, Leader of the House, Penny Morden, in a scathing address, announced that the Conservatives would have no involvement in this political circus. This decision has raised temperatures in this House on an issue where feelings are already running high and this has put honourable and right honourable members in a more difficult position. It also appears from the advice of his clerk that the decision is taken against the long-standing and established processes and procedures of this House. The Government will play no further part in the decision this House takes on today's proceedings. Morden's counterpart, Labour's Lucy Powell, got a bit desperate. Keep shouting, keep shouting, you're just embarrassing yourselves, quite honestly. It's astonishing, really, Madam Deputy Speaker, that the party opposite are now suddenly finding themselves standing in defence of the Scottish Nationalist Party. Well, then Labour MP Chris Bryant stood up to speak and everyone in the SNP and the Tories and, frankly, the public had had enough. <laughs> It's a complete joke, isn't it, this? And that's why the Speaker eventually returned tonight, cap in hand. And I apologise <laughs> for, for a decision that didn't end up in the place that I wished for. Not good enough, though, for a seething Stephen Flynn in the SNP. I'm afraid that that is treating myself and my colleagues in the Scottish National Party with complete and utter contempt yeah. and it, I will take significant convincing that your position is not now intolerable. Yeah. So there you have it, absolutely astonishing scenes, Hoyle is deep in trouble, his job is hanging by a thread and this whole sorry episode once again raises serious questions about an anti-conservative bias running through our political institutions. Meanwhile you've got protesters outside Parliament, some of them spouting borderline anti-Semitic conspiracy theories. This whole thing has been orchestrated by Israel in order to carry out genocide. 
Yeah, more on that later, by the way. I was out and about there. Yet again, our politicians have turned this country into a laughing stock. They are a complete shower, and Lindsay Hoyle has to go. Why did the Speaker do such a massive favour for Sir Keir Starmer? Is there something sinister at play? It's outrageous. Even if we take him at face value, that he was fearing for Labour MP's safety, that's the rumour doing the rounds now, he's fearing for Labour MP's safety, then why not address the bigger issue? There is a violent, raging mob of people in this country who are now dictating the way this country is governed. And the irony is that many of them were probably Labour supporters until October. It's absolutely ridiculous.